Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome. It is lovely, lovely, lovely to see you all. Thank you for joining us on this glorious morning. The sun is shining. How wonderful to be in God's creation and, as, uh, and just see all these beautiful flower arrangements around us. Thank you to all the flower arrangers who worked so hard to prepare these and to get them done in time for them to uh, be in the church for 72 hours with, so that they're germ-free for us and things like that. That's a whole story I won't, uh, <laughs> I won't go into. But thank you to the flower rangers, to all those involved in that and all those for whom they'll be taking these posies out and giving them to people in the community. Um, and, and I'm certain if, if you, for those people who are receiving these, they will be very, very grateful. So, wonderful that you're with us. Thank you for the food that donations that we've received and we'll talk more about them in a little while. Notice-wise, um, today uh, is obviously our Harvest Festival. We've got our APCM coming up in a few weeks' time. You should have a notice sheet with that information on. I've also been given some other notices to say that um, the Ride and Stride that is normally organised um, by the diocese and by the Essex churches and things, that isn't happening this year, but Chris and Hugh and Jeff are still going to do it, which is brilliant. And they are going to um, walk and ride and things like that at probably end of September, beginning of October, and they're asking for sponsorship and you possibly saw the forums as you came in today. But if you'd like to do that, they'd be very grateful. And all the money they raise is uh, going to go to the work of the church, so they'd be grateful of that. And the other thing, just to let you know, is that um, we won't be taking a collection during the service, but on your way out, there's a little box, and if you wish to give a contribution to the work of the church, that's where you can pop it. So those are all our... Um, Notices for this morning, uh, welcome, and I'm going to hand over to Yvonne. <coughs> well, welcome from me too to this lovely service of harvest. And we're going to be working through the sheet, and if you join in with anything that's heavily typed. Oh God, you summon the day to dawn. You teach the morning to awaken the earth. Great, Great is, is your name. name. Great, Great is, is your love. love. For you the valleys will sing for joy. The trees of the field will clap their hands. Great, Great, Great is, is your name. name. Great, Great is your love. For you the kings of the earth shall bow. The poor and the persecuted shall shout for joy. Great, Great is your name. name. Great, Great is your love. Your love and mercy shall last forever, fresh as the morning, sure as the sunrise. Great, great is your name, great, great is your love. <clears throat> this is the day that the Lord has made. Let, Let us rejoice and be glad in it. You have put your ear to our heart, both when we prayed and when we doubted. You know well what we fear and what we question, what we long for and from what we turn away. And when we become deaf to you, with your grace, you never stop listening to us. In silence, in penitence and in confidence, we name the longings of our hearts and ask to be made whole as we confess our sins. So let us spend a moment or two in silence. We confess our wrongdoings as we seek God's forgiveness. O oh God, we confess that we have often used your gifts carelessly and acted as though we were not grateful. Hear our prayer, and in your mercy, forgive us and help us. When we enjoy the fruits of the harvest, 
but forget that you have given them to us. Father, in your mercy, forgive forgive us and help us. When we are full and satisfied, but ignore the cry of the hungry and those in need. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. When we are thoughtless and do not treat with respect and care the wonderful world you have made. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. When we store up goods for ourselves alone, as if there were no God in heaven, Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. Grant us loving concern for all people, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Who love the world, forgive us the wrong that we do and make us holy to serve him in the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So we hear our first reading. reading is taken from Psalm 104 verses 10 to 23. God the creator and provider. He makes springs pour forth water into the ravines. It flows between the mountains. They give water to all the beasts of the field. The wild donkeys quench their thirst. The birds of the sky nest by the waters. They sing among the branches. He waters the mountains from his upper chambers. The land is satisfied by the fruit of his work. He makes grass grow for the cattle and plants for people to cultivate, bringing forth food from the earth. Wine that gladdens human hearts, oil to make their faces shine, and bread that sustains their hearts. The trees of the Lord are well watered, The cedars of Lebanon that he planted, there the birds make their nests. The stork has its home in the junipers. The high mountains belong to the wild goats. The crags are a refuge for the hyrax. He made the moon to mark the seasons, and the sun knows when to go down. You bring darkness, it becomes night, and all the beasts of the forest prowl. The lions roar for their prey and seek their food from God. The sun rises and they steal away. They return and lie down in their dens. Then people go out to their work, to their labour until evening. This is the word of the Lord. I think that's such a beautiful psalm. Thank you, Sally. Sally actually read a different version from the one that I've got here. I actually think it was really beautiful. I think I prefer it. This is a more modern one. But I've got some quotes from it which aren't quite the same. The spring gushes forth water, the water of life, giving drink to all the wild animals and also, of course, to us. We get through twice, we're told that the birds nest in the trees, make their homes there, and sing. Satisfied with the fruit of your work, says the psalmist, because it brings forth food from the earth, wine to gladden the human heart, and makes the face shine. Their nests, the rocks and crags provide shelter for the wild animals. And then it ends and people go out to their work and to their labour until the evening. So we have a picture of a wonderful world 
And then we have a picture just at the end of people going out to their neighbour. Going out perhaps to look after the world too. The beautiful thing is that the world never changes except by human intervention. And haven't these gifts that we heard about been a tremendous comfort to us during this strange and discomforting time? We have food and water. Many of us are lucky enough to have gardens. We can hear the birds sing. We can walk in the countryside where the animals and the birds seem to have flourished. They've enjoyed the quieter life that they've experienced. So we come today to give thanks, but also remembering that we also <coughs> have gifts to offer. We've got the gifts of fellowship and the gifts of friendship, the gift of goodwill towards others, as well as many skills which we can use to help the world and to help others. And may I add my thanks actually to the flower group. The 18 people have contributed flowers, skill, money, in order that we can have all these flowers to give away and to decorate the church because it wouldn't be right Harvest Festival, if we didn't do that, I don't think. So, thank you to them. And thank you, of course, to people who've provided food for the food bank. Now, in a moment, we're going to sing... Well, we're not going to sing, I'm sorry. We're going to hear the hymn, All Things Bright and Beautiful. Some... Uh, well, I don't know. I can't remember who it's sung by, actually, but... It's um, the Rutter version of that hymn. And it was actually written in 1848, so a long time ago, and it's still very popular. I'm going to tell you just a little bit about it, and perhaps why it's so popular, one reason. It is a lovely hymn, yes. But its popularity might also be due to a book called All Creatures Great and Small, written by, I'm sure you could all tell me, James Herriot. And that was published in 1972. And I probably would find that people here are watching the new serial based on that, um, which is lovely. Apparently, James Herriot's daughter suggested the name of the book using a phrase from the first verse of All Things Bright and Beautiful, when she called it All Creatures Great and Small. And he later on wrote three more books, and he called those All Things Bright and Beautiful, all things wise and wonderful, and the Lord God made them all. So we give thanks to everything that the Lord God has made for us and the life he's given to us in our harvest today. So we're going to listen now, as long as my system works, to all things bright and beautiful.
It is taken from Luke 12, verses 13 to 21. Some, but it's the parable of the rich fool. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, Man, who appointed me a judge or an arbiter between you? Then he said to them, Watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. He told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I'll, turn, I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store my surplus grain. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then you will get what you have prepared for yourself. Sorry, then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves but is not rich towards God. This is the word of the Lord. I just have to say, I do love that music, that Rutter song. That was beautiful, wasn't it? Yeah, really beautiful. Living in Kelvin and Hatch and the surrounding areas, you cannot have failed to have seen the tractors, the combine harvesters, all the various grain lorries going up and down and busying themselves in all the different fields. And our farmers have been so busy and are still busy because they're gathering in all different crops and will be, I'm told, for the next few weeks. So we really have to keep them in our prayers at this time because for their safety and for the at long hours that they are working. And we don't know if the rich man in the parable that Bar Barbara's just read, we don't know if he's just if he's a farmer or if he's just a landowner, but we assume he is in that role of somehow in the farming community and that he owns the land as well. The harvest has been gathered in and he's had a bumper crop. And so what does he decide to do? Well, he decides that his existing barns, they're not gonna fit it all, so let's tear them all down, build new ones and store it all up. And then he's gonna sit back and enjoy it. That sounds all right, doesn't it? That sounds quite nice, actually. Those are, you know, he's worked hard for it. He should be able to sit back and enjoy it. Well, yes, we should be able to enjoy the, the fruit of our labour, we should be able to enjoy that. But what we, this is all saying is that actually God has created it all. God has made everything. The reading, the song that we heard. He's made the flowers, the water, the sun, the soil. He's made the air that we breathe. He's made, God has made everything. And we need to give thanks to God and we're doing that today. But God has made it not just for the rich, he's made it for the poor, he's made it for everyone to enjoy. Now during this COVID pandemic that we've had over the recent months and still have, people didn't go and build barns, they bought extra freezers. <coughs> and toilet rolls became a prized possession. And fights broke out over toilet rolls. Could you get an extra internet shopping slot? I know I couldn't. I couldn't get any at all. And some people already had a regular delivery slot and managed to get an extra one on top. And then the key workers, those wonderful people who kept our country growing, <coughs> going. The key workers who were always working and doing things. Well, when they managed to get to the shops, there was no food there. It had already been sold. And so the shops 
had to create extra time slots for the key workers to go to. And then there were the people who were in the vulnerable age category and the people who were shielding and who still are shielding some of them. And but they couldn't even go out to the shops. How were they going to get food? And so fortunately, there were wonderful people who stepped up, who became the people who became volunteers, who helped their neighbour, who supported them by delivering food, picking up prescriptions, going and making and seeing if they were okay. And this church, our Ivor sitting there, he's involved in the Good Neighbour Scheme and we thank, thank you and all of those involved in that Good Neighbour Scheme. And we think of all those others who were involved in it in, through different other charities. And all those neighbours who stepped up. And the majority of people who did start to get in more food, they did it because they were frightened that they were going to run out of food and they didn't know when they would next be able to go shopping. And I totally get that and I'm not criticising them at all because it was really, really frightening that we were just not going to have any food at all. And how are we going to get it? But it was the people who bought and bought and bought and then kept it and really hoarded it like a rich man in the parable. One of the good things to come out of this pandemic, this awful time, has been a sense of community. And God wants us to be in community with one another. He wants us to be in relationship with one another, to look out for one another and help one another, take care of one another. And so that's really what's come out of this pandemic is that people did do that. A lot of people did. I know of one particular drive where they all sat at the bottom of their driveways and all had a little chat every so often. And that was so good for them because it might help them to keep an eye on their neighbours and make sure everybody was okay. It also was good for them mentally as well, that they weren't alone and feeling really abandoned and away from everybody. <clears throat> there were some who sang to their neighbours. One person sang every week to the neighbours. And how great that was, those gifts and talents that Yvonne was talking about. And he would come out and sing. And everyone so appreciated that. And other people did other things. And brilliant. And so that is something that God wants us to carry on doing. And so in the same way as these flowers have been made and they will go out and bring joy to people. And the joy for those flower rangers when they sat there making them. They were really happy. That sense of, oh, this is what we enjoy. We're getting to use flowers that are so beautiful. And maybe at the end, you might not be able to see, but there is some beautiful arrangements with uh, gourds and marrows and all sorts at the altar. Just celebrating God's goodness. Which is a lot about wisdom. Proverbs chapter 19 says, chapter verse 17, Whoever is kind to the poor lends to the Lord and will be repaid in full. Now poor doesn't mean financially poor. It does, but it also means you could be poor in spirit, feeling lonely, missing your family. You could be in poor health. So those people are really struggling with health issues. It could be even like mental ill health and things like that. It could be the fact that you couldn't come to church and there's still people who can't come to church at the moment because they're worried. So when we help those people who are poor in spirit, poor in whatever way, we are doing God's work and God sees all that we are doing. Jesus teaches us to love one another as I have loved you. The rich man in our parable was selfish. 
He stockpiled it all. And he thought of only his own needs. He didn't think about the people around him. He could have used his existing barns, filled them up, and he could have then shared the excess food. He could have made food for the people around him. But he didn't. So today you've come to a harvest festival and you opened up your barns, your cupboards at home. You've opened them up and you've bought things from your barns to share with others. And the food is going to the food bank at Dodd Road Church. Now I've had people say to me, we don't need a food bank around here. We've got no need of it around here. I've had that. Well, sadly, we do. We do. And as many of you are aware, the furlough scheme is due to end in the coming few weeks. And I think we're going to need it even more when that ends. People will be made redundant. Or people might end up on less hours of work. Our food bank is open for four hours on a Tuesday and on a Wednesday. And I've been told that in the last month, they helped 283 people. And that's adults and children. People are now attending it who have always worked. Who have always worked. But unfortunately, during this pandemic, because their wages have been changed and altered, they've not been able to afford to pay their bills and to buy food. And so they have to try and juggle and, and manage, and then they get to that point where they can't manage anymore. But you know, for a lot of those people, because they've always worked, there's a sense of pride in that, do I need to really go to the food bank? And they have to overcome that. And so for those people, by the time they get to the food bank, they're desperate. The volunteers at the food bank don't judge anyone. They treat everyone as an individual, loved by God, and who at the moment needs their help. So your donations, <coughs> thank you, thank you. The guides met this week on Thursday night um, and they gave a big box of food. And unfortunately, because they're not allowed to meet um, in the normal way, they're not here today. The same with the brownies. But they've sent that food. So we thank them for that. Is in the fields all around us and in the allotments over the back here. The flowers, the crops, the fruits and the vegetables. But we also, as Yvonne told us, we have the fruits of the harvest within us. We have joy and peace and patience and gentleness and kindness and love and generosity. And there might be one or two more, but there's ten gifts that God gives us, each one of us, to share with others and not hoard and keep to ourselves. Wide your heart, your barn, open wide and share God's gifts with everyone. And when we do, we are living in community as God wants us to do. In community and then at services on other days, we share communion, that coming together with God in sharing the bread and the wine. So thank you for the gifts of the harvest. Amen. So let us stand and declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and earth is named. 
we believe in God the Son, who lives in our lives through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. So please be seated for our prayers. God, we saw and spelt your generosity as we entered the church today. And we give you thanks for all who have added to its beauty over the years, and for those who have prepared it with flowers and gifts for our harvest thanksgiving service today. We thank you for all who lead worship here, and all who contribute to the life of, of the church. Generous God, at this harvest time, we thank you for all the good things you give us, we thank you for our food. We remember all those who do not have enough for even one proper meal each day. We thank you for the chance you give to others as we offer goods for the food bank to alleviate the suffering and need of our neighbours. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember this morning that people have worked hard sweated, hurt their backs, and endured all weathers to get food to us. Honest toil and sometimes exploited labour. Then there are packers, shippers, refiners, warehousemen, lorry drivers, shop assistants, all who have passed on your good gifts to our tables. They deserve our thanks much more often than once a year. So for what we have received, make us truly thankful. Lord, when we next take a tomato from the fridge, or cut a slice of bread, or pour some rice into a pan, bring to our minds in humble gratitude the chain of production that got food there. Give us imagination to appreciate the complexity of our interdependence with the rest of the world. And finally, let our minds pause in grateful contemplation of your abundant love. Your good earth produces enough food for everyone, but we should be mindful that there are many starving people throughout the world, and we should be careful not to waste what God has given us. Strengthen the hands of the aid agencies, reorder the priorities of governments, and move the hearts of all to recognise the face of Christ in the plight of the hungry. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. At this harvest time, we thank you for the world we see around us, for the flowers and trees and animals. Help us to protect your creation by being careful about how we use your resources so there will be clean water, clean air and plenty of wild birds, mammals and insects to maintain the ecological balance of our countryside. We ask your blessing upon our homes and all who are dear to us. We pray for the community in which we live we remember especially any who may be in need of help or guidance at this time of pandemic, pandemic and uncertainty. We think today of the terrible fires in Oregon and all the people who have been made homeless and pray for the safety of the firefighters and rescuers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Lord, we ask your blessing upon all who are ill, at home or in hospital. 
We remember also loved ones who are caring for them and who are anxious and fearful. We pray for all who cannot cope on their own. We ask your blessing upon all carers and those involved in medical care and the rescue service. In a moment of silence, we think of those we know who need your comfort. And we pray especially this morning for Vi Eher, who had a fall and is still in hospital. We pray for those who have lost loved ones. Welcome into your kingdom those who have finally lived out their days as we miss their physical presence. We thank you for the gift of their lives. Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Collect Prayer for Harvest. Creator God, you made the goodness of the land, the riches of the sea, and the rhythm of the seasons. As we thank you for the harvest, may we cherish and respect this planet and its peoples. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We say together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. To say together, well I'm going to say the verses and perhaps you will join in in the chorus. For we plough the fields and scatter. We can't really have a harvest festival without that one. Um, but just before I do this, can I just say that the flowers on the back shelf are available for you to take out. You can take them for yourself, or you can take them if you've got a neighbour, a friend, a relative, who you'd like to give them to. And they are a gift from the church for them or for you. And now, we plough the fields and scatter the good seed on the land, but it is fed and watered by God's almighty hand. He sends the snow in winter, the warmth to swell the grain, the breezes and the sunshine and soft refreshing rain. All good gifts around us are sent from heaven above. Then thank the Lord, oh thank the Lord, for all his love. He only is the maker of all things near and far. He paints the wayside flower, he lights the evening star. The winds and waves obey him, by him the birds are fed. Much more to us, his children, he gives our daily bread. All good gifts around us are sent from heaven above. Then thank the Lord, oh thank the Lord, for all his love. <coughs> we thank thee then, O oh Father, for all things bright and good, the seed time and the harvest, our life, our health, our food. Accept the gifts we offer, for all thy love imparts, and what thou most desirest, our humble, thankful hearts. All good gifts around us are sent from heaven above. Then thank the Lord, oh thank the Lord, for all is his love.
Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the source of all goodness and growth, pour his blessing upon all things created and upon us, his children, and the blessing that we may use, sorry, that we may use his gifts to his glory and the welfare of all his peoples and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us and those we hold in our hearts today and always. Amen. Amen. Now I am going to walk this way, that's why I put my mask on. If you want to turn around in your queues, <coughs> because all our gifts 